Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lee Fuge, and in this video today, we're going to be taking a look at the Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200. The Black Spirit 200 is an amplifier head from Hughes and Kettner, and as you can see by the way I'm holding it, it's not very heavy. It weighs just three and a half kilos. So if you're a traveling musician or someone who needs to pack light, this is a pretty good option. You could probably even fit this in a suitcase if you want and take it on a plane with you. Black Spirit 200 is a 200 watt class D power amp. So there's a lot of volume in this thing. You can actually switch it between two watts, 20 watts and 200. For this demo, I've got it on the 20 watt mode, but if you need that extra push, you've always got the uh, maximum volume there of 200 watts. The Black Spirit 200 is what Hughes and Kettner refer to as a fourth way of building amps. So this is not a solid state transistor amp, it's not a tube amp and it's not a digital modeling amp. All of the tone from this comes from this little thing inside called the Spirit Tone Generator. The aim of the Spirit Tone Generator is to recreate that feel and tone and response that we get from our favorite valve amps. No one really knows how this thing works other than the guys that designed it. But basically it interacts with every step of the signal flow. So in a typical valve circuit, each stage of the gain and the tone stacks will interact with the one before it. But with the Black Spirit 200, every step of this amp circuit interacts with the Spirit Tone Generator. So while Hughes and Kettner will probably never divulge how the Spirit Tone Generator works, I can definitely tell you it works well and it sounds great. This thing, like I said, you could fit into a suitcase, but it's got all the feel and all the tone of a fully fledged, full size valve amplifier. So there's a lot of stuff going on with this amp. So let's go through some specs. Obviously on the front panel, there's quite a lot to get through. So we've first of all got four different channels. We've got clean, crunch, lead, and ultra. And obviously as the name suggests, it goes from a totally clean to a very sort of heavy, saturated gain. There's also an input boost, which is really, really cool. This adds a little kick to the front end of the amp. So you can kind of get two different voices out of each channel. So if you're running like a clean voice, you can kick the boost on and get a pushed clean. Now I should also mention everything on this amp is savable to a bunch of presets. There's a bunch built into the amp, but you can also expand this with the Hughes and Kettner foot switch, which is this one, the FSM 432. This allows you to get 128 different voices out of the amp over MIDI. It's also got tap tempo and a bunch of other cool features as well. I'm not gonna be using this for the purpose of the video. I'm just gonna be doing everything from the amp, but this will also take the amp to the next level if you wanna turn this into your entire rig. So along with the four channels, we've got a bunch of different effects built in. So there's a little modulation section here which has chorus, flanger, phaser and tremolo. We've also got a delay built in and a reverb. There's also a noise gate. There's a lot of things going on here. There's also a sagging control which is really cool. This simulates power amp saturation and compression. This is something I talked about a little bit when I did the Spirit Nano series videos as well. And this is all MIDI controllable like I also mentioned. Each of the pots you see on the front of the amp has two different purposes. So when you look at this closely, there's a layer on the bottom and a layer on the top. So the bottom layer, these three controls here in the middle are our EQ section, so treble, mid and bass. This is our channel volume and our gain. Over here then we've got the noise gate, which is super, super tight. It's really great for taming those high gain sounds and the sagging control, which is on an eight position rotary switch. This is then the output section, so we've got the master volume, the presence control, and the resonance control. The resonance control works with neutral being the 12 o'clock position. As you push it up, you get more resonance, and as you take it down, you get more of a dampened speaker sound. The presence just works on a linear way, so when it's on zero, you get no presence, and the higher you push it, the more it brings out the upper frequencies. If I then want to access the secondary features, I press this button here, the FX access, and then all of these pots here take on their second feature. So this then becomes cab type, which only works when I use the red box IR on the back, which we'll talk about later on in the video. You can actually run this straight into the front of house and use one of the eight onboard cab simulations. The noise gate becomes reverb. So this is your overall digital reverb volume and amount. The EQ section then becomes your delay section. So you've got delay level, feedback and delay time. You can also tap the tempo of this via the MIDI foot switch. Then the channel volume becomes the modulation type, so you can select which modulation you want. Each quarter of this also adjusts the rate of the modulation. So for instance, the first quarter is the chorus. So when it's all the way down, I'm on the lowest chorus rate. And when it's right up to the top of that quarter, I'm on the highest chorus rate. What was previously the channel gain is now the modulation intensity. So this is like the mix control, the overall volume you hear 
of the modulation. There's an FX loop switch, which is great if you want to add some external effects into the loop of this thing. And then when you're done dialing your tone in, you simply press the store button. The amp will remember a preset for each channel. So what I've done is I've dialed in my favorite kind of tones on the clean crunch lead and ultra channels. But honestly, you can make this thing sound like whatever you want. There is no limits with what you can tweak this thing into doing. So there's a ton of features built into this. It's one of the most versatile amps I think I've heard in a long, long time. And I mean, look how light it is, three and a half kilos. You're never gonna break your back carrying this thing around. Because it's 200 watt, it can drive some pretty big cabs. Like I said, I've just got it set on the 20 watt mode today and I'm going into a one by 12 cab. But if you're pushing this into a four by 12, you might wanna bump up to 200 watts and really get the most out of that headroom. So I'll plug this thing in now and show you guys some of the tones it can do. And then we'll talk about some of the other features as we go through the video. The guitar I'm gonna be using for this video is my Vola Oz ROA. I'm using obviously the Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit, so all the tones you hear are coming directly from the amp. I've got no external effects added whatsoever, it's just the guitar straight into the amp head. That's going through the cool amplification 1x12 you can see behind me there, which is loaded with a Celestian Creamback, the 65 watt version. And I've got that amp mic'd up with the Lewitt Audio LCT 440 condenser microphone. Because all of the pots on the Black Spirit 200 are programmable via MIDI, Obviously the way the settings look on the front of the amp panel aren't going to represent the sounds that I've pre-programmed. So I've programmed the sounds in and saved presets, but obviously I will tweak them as we go along so you get a little bit of an idea of how tweakable this thing is. But you can pretty much make it sound like anything you can imagine. So we're going to start off with a clean tone. I've got the channel switch here in the clean position. There's no modulation on this and I've got a little bit of reverb on the tone as well. <coughs> So it's a really nice chimey sort of open-ended American clean. Now if I click the boost control, it's gonna hit the front end of that a little harder and I'm gonna get a nice pushed clean. <laughs> So you can hear just a hint of breakup at the top end of that clean tone. That's really cool if you want to get into that kind of Stevie Ray or John Mayer kind of vibe. With the boost control off, you get these really kind of pristine cleans, great for sort of funk playing. There's also a bunch of effects built in, so let's take a look at some of those. So I'm gonna press the FX access button. Now what this will do is this will activate the top function of each control. So I want to come over here now to the mod type. I want to select a chorus style effect. So in the middle of the quarter, it's between the two dots. So up to that dot there is where I'm dealing with the chorus. So let's set this about halfway for a moderate rate and I'll get the intensity at about halfway as well. <laughs> You can obviously dial in a less intense chorus if you keep that rate quite low and maybe the intensity a little bit lower as well. Then we've got a flanger effect. We've also got a phaser effect if we come into the third quarter. Mm. 
And we've also got a tremolo effect. So even just on the clean channel there, you can see how tweakable that is. You can see how far you can go with the tones of this thing. So I'm going to turn the effects off now and just give you a quick look at how the EQ controls work. So I'm just going to play a little bit and move the EQ. I don't really know where they're set for the presets, so we'll just move them and see the range on them. And that's obviously before we've even started playing with the resonance, presence, and sagging controls. The EQ allows you to pretty much dial in any tone you can imagine. So now I'm going to move over to the crunch channel. So I've got this set up as a low gain overdrive. So as you can hear, the crunch tone is a low gain overdrive, great for sort of 60s and 70s blues rock. It's kind of like a pushed tweed amp to my ears a little bit. It's got a little bit of an American flavor. You can definitely make it sound a bit more British with some EQ shaping. So if you push those mids a bit more, you'd probably get into more of the ballpark of like a sort of pushed plexi kind of vibe. Now, obviously the sagging control works really well when you come to the overdrive sounds. So if I put the sagging all the way down to one, I'm gonna get the sort of natural response, there's going to be very minimal tube style compression here. And then the higher up that sagging control goes, we get more power amp or tube style compression, which is going to saturate the amp a little bit more. So with all those different sagging options, you can really dial in the right feel for the amp as well. I personally like it about four or five where you get a little bit of that tube style compression, but the amp still feels really open. <laughs> As 
you go up the channels, the amount of gain on offer increases. So if I put the gain on full on the crunch channel, there's gonna be a bit of gain there to do sort of classic rock kind of stuff, but it's not gonna be super saturated metal gain. <laughs> The other really cool thing is using that boost control. So if I play with the crunch channel again and just kick on the boost, you're just gonna get a slightly more pushed crunch tone. So the boost does actually add quite a big kick there to the front end. That's also foot switchable via the MIDI foot switch. So if you're using that at a gig, you could use the boost function to either push your tone or you could use it as a lead boost. Now let's go over to the lead channel, which is the third channel. This is a higher gain again than the crunch channel, but it's not the most amount of gain. So here we're getting into that kind of pushed sort of 80s kind of martial stack kind of tone. This is great for those big rock riffs. I like this as kind of an 80s rock kind of tone. You can get pretty heavy on this channel, but again, not super saturated. So this is where we make the transition now from classic rock into hard rock. <laughs> So again, there's quite a bit of gain there, but it's not intensely saturated. The sagging control works really well at this stage as well, because we're playing with higher gain now, it's really responsive. So when the sagging is all the way down, we get this real tight sound. And then with the sagging all the way up, we get a much more sort of compressed, squashy, heavy sound. If gain is the thing you're looking for, then the ultra channel is where you want to be. This is the highest amount of gain that's available in the Black Spirit. So in the ultra mode, it's super saturated. There's a lot of gain there and a lot of low end. Obviously, like I said, I'm in the 20 watt mode. So if you had this running at 200 watt mode through a four by 12, you'd really be moving some serious air. I've got the master volume very low here just because I'm in a studio setting. But again, there's so much volume in this thing that if you were pushing those cabs even harder, you're really gonna push that low end even more. The Ultra sounds great for those high gain riffs. It's probably way too much gain than I would ever, ever need, but it's always useful to know that it's there if you need it. It also feels really tight and the noise gate really helps with that. So if I just turn the noise gate off, you can hear all that background hiss coming in and that's with the volume on my guitar down. And even with the noise gate up just a little bit, 
clamps it straight away. It's really quick and really responsive. So as soon as you stop playing, that noise gate slams down on the sound. So again, great for gigging. If you play high gain live, that noise gate is gonna keep your sound super tight and in check as well. So I've mentioned the sagging control very briefly, but I haven't sort of gone into it in too much detail. So I'm gonna go back to the lead channel now. And I'm gonna walk you through all of the different stages of sagging. So I'm gonna start all the way down where there's no sagging. I'm just gonna keep playing and increase the amount of sag so you can hear the difference as we go along. So this all the way down now is super tight, no power amp compression whatsoever. The more we push that control, the more it's gonna compress. <laughs> So as I was increasing that control, you could almost hear it squashing down. The high frequencies weren't as present, they weren't as cutting, and it just made the whole thing feel a little spongier and a little looser. If you'd like a super tight sound, the sagging control all the way down is gonna work for you, and if you want it sort of much spongier, more classic rock feeling, up is gonna work great as well. So one thing we haven't talked about is the delay. So I've gone back to the clean channel here, I'm gonna press the FX access button to enable the top layer functions. The treble control now becomes the delay level, the mid control becomes the feedback and the bass becomes the delay time. So I'm just gonna set everything straight up at 12 o'clock. So I can dial in a real tight slap back by bringing the delay time right down and the feedback right down. I can dial in more spacey delays by pushing the feedback and the delay time up. So if I go for maximum feedback and the delay time on about half. Quite a lot of feedback on offer there if you want the sort of self oscillation thing as well and a quick word about the reverb as well actually while we're here so the maximum amount of reverb you can get is this Quite a bit there on tap you can go from a real subtle reverb right up to a very full-on reverb so that's a run through of everything you can do from the front panel now obviously we've kind of skimmed over most of the features there because this amp does so much you can really really dial in anything you can imagine and hopefully just in that brief run through of everything you can kind of see that there's so many options available and you know basically the only thing here that really stops you from doing anything is your own imagination so if you want to dial in anything from a super clean American kind of vibe right up to a saturated metal amp through a classic British blues amp, it's all in there. The only thing we haven't talked about is the Redbox AE on the back. The Redbox is a direct to PA sort of IR loader. There are eight different cab types built into the Black Spirit 200. So this is cool because there's a couple of different ways you can run this. You can either run this through a cab and mic the cab up like I've done here, you can use the IR to go straight to front of house, but you can also do both of these at the same time. So you can have a cab on stage with you running like this and 
a feed to the PA system from the red box. You can also use this to go straight to the PA without a cab. The design of the Black Spirit 200 being Class D means it doesn't actually need to see a speaker load. So you can actually rack mount this and use it just as a direct solution like you would with something like a Helix. You don't need a speaker cab. You can rely completely on the red box. This is also great in the studio because you could plug the Black Spirit head straight into your mixer, which is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna run an XLR cable from the red box straight into my interface. Okay, so now I've plugged my Black Spirit 200 straight into my interface via the red box, so my cabinet behind me is disconnected. I'm gonna go through the eight different cab types built in. So there's two 1x12s, there's a 2x12, a 4x10, and then four different 4x12s. So we'll start with some clean tones, I'll just play a little bit, and I will move the cab type, and you'll see on the screen what type of cab is selected. <coughs> I'll do the same thing on the crunch channel just so you can hear the same cab sims with a bit of overdrive. So once again I'll just play a bit and I'll flip through the cab sims so you can hear the difference. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there you go guys, there is a run through of everything you can do with the Hughes and Ketna Black Spirit 200. Now, as you've seen from this video, this amp is incredibly in depth. You can do a ton of different stuff and there's a thousand and one different great guitar tones in there that you can dial in. It's really adaptable for any situation. You can use it to drive a cab, you can go straight to front of house or into your recording interface, or you can do a combination of the two. That's also useful in the studio because you could have a sort of live mic in the front of the amp and use the red box IO at the back and have two different guitar tones recorded at once. Pretty cool, lots of flexibility. It's also super lightweight, three and a half kilos. So if you're a traveling musician, whether you're using this as your main amp or your backup amp, you don't really have to worry about size or weight being an issue. You could put this in your suitcase and you would never even notice it's there because it's so light. But yet at the same time, it can drive 200 watts of power out from its Class D power amp. So it's got a lot to offer for any situation, I think. It's such a cool sounding amp and the guys at Hughes and Ketna very, very kindly gave this to me a few weeks ago to shoot some videos with and I love this thing. It's such a versatile amp and you know, whether you're just playing at home or gonna take this out on stage, it's gonna be really useful. I'm personally looking forward to when we can go back to playing live so I can test this thing out at some real volume as well. It sounds great in the house, in the studio, but I really wanna hear this thing really opened up with the speaker cabinet as well to see what it can do. The feel and the sort of touch sensitivity of this thing is great. It really does everything from, you know, super kind of scooped American cleans up to that big heavy metal sort of sound as well. I probably would never ever use it on those sort of extreme gain settings, but I love the crunch and the lead sort of tones where you can get into this 80s rock ballpark and the classic rock sounds that it has on offer as well. What a great amp. Hughes and Ketma have done a stellar job with this thing and they've packed so many features in and the Spirit Tone Generator really does make it feel like a real sort of valve amp. It really does bring the question forward of do tube amps still matter? I love tube amps, I always have, and I think I always will, but the more things like this I try, the more I'm convinced that maybe it's not that much of a difference anymore. Maybe these sort of chips or whatever the spirit tone generator is, whatever that does, no one will ever know, but whatever that thing is and whatever it does, it's certainly getting close to that organic feel and organic sound of a tube amp. So, I mean, are we looking at the potential tail off of real tube amps? I don't know, but, these things are definitely getting close. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of the Hughes & Kettner Black Spirit 200. Where do you stand on the whole new generation of amps that's coming through? Do you guys think that the tube amp is coming to an end? Do you think things like this are gonna replace it? I'm very interested in hearing what you guys think. The Spirit Tone Generator, like I said, is a super cool concept. I'd love to know more about how it works, but I don't think Hughes & Kettner are ever gonna spill the beans on that one but maybe one day we'll find out. Hopefully you guys can see how versatile this thing is in this video as well. Obviously we could spend days talking about all the different tones we could dial in, which is why I went down the road of just dialing in some of my favorite tones to show you a little bit of what it can do. But really you can tweak this thing into whatever you want. The EQ is super responsive, coupled with the power amp section, the sagging options, the effects built in. You can pretty much turn this into whatever amp you want. So it's a super versatile addition to anyone's collection. So. If you've tried one, let me know what you think. Let me know what type of tones you guys are dialing in. I'd love to hear about it. And if you did enjoy, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button because you guys doing that really helps me to keep on growing this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.